At this point, we have jointed a hexagon using the bird's mouth bit and rounded the hexagon using a tool path, which was produced through VCarve Pro. Now we're going to use our JTEC 24 watt laser to laser burn a cool design into this cylinder. From there, we will create a functional item so that even more value is added to this piece. We're going to focus on the setup of the laser as it pertains to the positioning of the Onefinity Revolution and the workpiece itself. At the end of the video, I'll provide a full walkthrough on how I set this up in VCarve Pro so that you can replicate the work if you want to. The JTEC laser needs to be at a height of a quarter inch above the surface material. If you don't account for the left and right sides, the workpiece will actually knock your laser off of balance, which can be a significant safety issue. So that means that we can't use the entire surface area of this cylinder. We need to account for the left and the right, which is approximately 1.5 inches on each side. Even though this is a 15 and a half inch cylinder in length, we're gonna program it as a 12 inch cylinder to make sure the laser has enough room to get in and do the job that it needs to do. I used this target here on the Onefinity Revolution to zero X and Y. I lined it up on the center right there and then I moved it over manually to the right, seven and a quarter inches. This all might sound a little crazy, but I'll show you why it works. Let's get it burned. Not with this though. When I cut this piece off with the table saw, it made this side uneven, so that made it an unsafe cut. So we're gonna go back in time and use this handsaw to cut the other piece off. So we've got the finished piece off of the CNC here. This looks really cool. We're gonna go ahead and finish it. I have this 50-50 mix of shellac and denatured alcohol. If you wanna check out how I made that, uh, take a look at this other video up top. So I'm just gonna hit this with three rounds of this spray. Um, it's gonna take about 30 minutes to dry in between because of the level of alcohol that I have in the mixture. These are a couple of other pieces that I cut out. This is gonna be the top of the finished item and this is gonna be the base for it. Wow. 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 Wow.
This turned out a lot better than I expected. I really like how the shellac brings out a shine in the maple while still keeping that natural hardwood look. Next up, let's talk about how to turn this into a functional item. I've got a lamp kit right here behind me and we're gonna put it together real quick. So far we've used the Onefinity CNC, the JTEC laser and VCarve software to get us to this point. Now we're going to take all that work and turn it into something we can actually sell. At the end of the video, I'll walk you through how I use the VCarve Pro software in coordination with the JTEC 24 watt laser and the Onefinity Revolution to burn this design directly onto the surface. So for this part, I took the Onefinity Revolution off and I carved a couple of other pieces for this lamp. I carved a top cap here. It's gonna sit right on top like so. And then I carved out a base piece right here. I did two, cir two circles here, uh, area clearance toolpaths, and this is gonna hold the nut for the bottom of the lamp. Only thing left to do is to plug it in and see if it works. Here goes nothing. Nice, there we go. That's dope. Cool thing about this light bulb is it has a couple of different settings. You got plant growth, TV time, a relaxed setting. This is a full RGB light bulb, folks. This is gonna be really cool. It's Wi-Fi controlled. It's got alarm colors, fireplace colors, party colors, pastel colors, jungle. That is so cool. So this was a really fun project to do. Over the last few videos, I was able to create a stock hexagon using my bird's mouth bit. I then used my Onefinity Revolution to carve that hexagon into a cylinder. After that, I laser burned this image produced by ChatGPT onto the surface of the cylinder. Once all of that was done, I was able to cut out a lamp base and a top for the cylinder using my Onefinity Journeyman. All of these smaller projects came together to finish this final product, which is a cool RGB lamp. I'm going to put the links to all of these items in the description below, just in case you wanna try this project out for yourself. I've had a blast making this, and for the last part of this video, I will include a brief tutorial on how I use VCarve Pro to produce the toolpath for the JTEC laser and Onefinity Revolution. A common question that I see going around the forums all the time is how much would you charge for a piece like this? I'm interested to know what my viewers think about how much this is worth, how much you would pay for it, and how much you would actually sell it for as a woodworker. Charge 20 bucks an hour, I think is a little bit steep. Let me know what you think in the comments. All right, so the first thing I'm gonna show you guys is how to get the image to show up like this on ChatGPT. So it's really all about the prompt that you're gonna use. This is the prompt right here that I use to produce this image, which I will transfer over to VCarve Pro. I'm gonna go ahead and copy and paste this prompt here in the description so you guys can use that and modify it however you want for your images. Second thing we're going to do is set up the job size so make sure you select rotary. The length of this is going to be 12.5 because I need room on the left and the right side so that we don't lock the JTEC off of the tool. Uh, my diameter is going to be 3.68. Now for the laser application you're going to use the Z0 position of cylinder surface. I'm going to go ahead and pop open my show toolpaths tab. Now I'm going to need some vectors in order to produce a laser toolpath. So I'm going to go and import my image and then I'm going to make some adjustments so that it fills out the entirety of the model. I'm going to rotate 90 degrees and then stretch it out so that it wraps all the way around the cylinder. Select trace bitmap. Select black and white. Click on preview. And then if you're satisfied with the way those vectors look, go ahead and click on apply. Click on close and now you have these really nice vectors of the image you just created. Now what I'm going to do is come over here to the laser cut and fill, and fill tool path. Based on my laser, what I'm going for is about an eighth of an inch depth on the cut and then I want a really nice uh, black burn on there. So I'm gonna use 90% power, 100 inches per minute move speed. Gonna make sure hatch fill is selected and then step over is gonna be 0 0.0075 based on the curve of my laser. And then I'm gonna go ahead and click on calculate. So this is the projection that it sees the machine is, uh, the software is predicting. So I need to make a correction on the backside here to close up these gaps. And all I'm gonna do to do that is go back into 2D view and then adjust the image. So to do that, I'll go into transform mode here and then I'll just drag this up. I'll click on close and then we're gonna go back into our laser cut, edit that and recalculate. Click on preview toolpaths. So this looks, this looks really good. I'll go ahead and uh, get this saved as a toolpath and send it out to the machine. 
One thing that's really important is that you're using the correct post processors. The laser module will already, before you get set up with your machine, will ask you what kind of laser you're using and it'll run you through the setup processor when you buy that. For the machine downstairs, we're using the Onefinity Wrap Y2A for the rotary. We go over here to save the toolpath. It's gonna to ask us what machine we're using. Make sure you have X50 Pro Journeyman or whatever machine it is that you're using. And then your post processor is gonna be Onefinity Wrap Y2A. Your laser cutter tool is going to be predefined based on how you set it up. So that should be using its own processor. Okay, I'll go ahead and save that and we'll get down to the machine.